on? Can you hear me? I can't hear me. <laughs> All right, 87 in your hymnal. Joy to the world. Let earth. Let every heart. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven have joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. What fields and floods rejoice? In sounding joy, or the sins and sorrows grow, no thorns in He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is drowned. truth and I didn't sing with you. I'm just trying to preserve my voice to teach this morning. I've got a bad sinus deal going, but good to see you here. You may be seated, and uh, we'll try to get something done here. Um, the Hauser family, we called him, or they called him in school, Doogie Hauser. I, for some reason, I don't know. I wouldn't want to be tagged with that, but um, they're laboring uh, just on the border, that right in, uh, I believe, in uh, Italy. Chuck, am I wrong, right? They're in Italy now, or on the border. Um, and thank you for your prayer sacrifice of support. Your fellowship and harvest of soul for souls is an undeserved blessing, and praise the Lord for, excuse me, praise the Lord your, for you. We are very grateful to our for your desire and burden of the gospel, divine appointments and open doors, and give witness to the people one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, this young man, he's, he's very young, but uh, he's just, if you ever met people that, I, I met a young man the other night, 14 years of age, uh, is really given his family guidance in the Word of God. And uh, he's got the right book, the right attitude. I said, what school do you go to? He said, I go to a public school. I said, you get a lot of rash on that? He said, oh yeah. Yeah, he said, but it ain't bothering me. It ain't bothering me at all. A lot of character in a 14-year-old young man. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was able to continue put, putting gospel tracts in mailboxes, and as I was finishing, I noticed a large Catholic picture of sticker on the tailgate of a wood delivery truck. The picture of the Catholic saint Pedro Peo, whoever that is, uh, who even today is one of the most venerated by the devout Catholics. He is said to have had red marks in his hands and feels the pains of them. In other words, he's feeling the pain of the cross of Calvary. You got it? Uh, <laughs> um, as well as his feet performed the mass, uh, perform the mass. Hear, hear confession. He explained it because it is God's manifest son. In other words, he wants the suffering of Christ be seen through him. Well, let me ask you a question. How many of you, have, as many as received him to become the child, child of God, how many of you children of God? Well, <laughs> do you feel pains? <laughs> this, is, this is what they play on, biblical stupidity. Not ignorance, stupidity. And you'll find that, that's what you're finding in the book of James right now. Um, anyway, pray for uh, the Hauser family and Brigham. We've been, Brother Chuck 
supporting the Brighams in China from the China, Japan, I'm sorry, since uh, the days of the farm. Thank you, Billy. <laughs> Better late than never. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, September report. One of our church members, Maiko, who was saved and baptized several years ago, has been growing in the Lord. She has a burden for her mother's salvation along with her rel other relatives and has been witnessing and praying for them. Recently, one of the cousins was rushed in the hospital due to a cardiac arrest. While in the hospital, Mako told him about Jesus over the phone and his need to have his sins forgiven. Mako's family and relatives were all also there with him and heard her witness. He prayed and asked the Lord Jesus Christ to save him right then and there. The Lord spared his life, and we pray that his decision was from the heart and that he will grow in Christ. My wife has been teaching six young uh, children in our afternoon English Sunday school. Uh, these young people went over to uh, Japan basically right after getting out of school, and just really a sweet family. Um, my wife has been teaching six young children afternoon English school, uh, Sunday school class for four years old to about 10 years old with the Bible stories and active activities to complete. It is a blessing to see them growing and learning truths from God's word. Several of them have not yet put their trust in Jesus, but we pray they will at, in time. And he's got the names of them, so you just ask the Lord to bless those that are doing and what they're doing and that. But it's just telling you, and it's, it'll take too much time to read all these. Uh, I, I would suggest once again, uh, that board, Chuck puts them up there. Take time and just take about five minutes of your time and read them. I believe you'll get a real blessing. This guy, Anderson, Papua New Guinea. How, how many of you would like to move to Papua New Guinea? Not me. You know what they do in New Guinea, in those jungles? They still eat people. Amen. Um, I went to school with his dad, Kelly Anderson. His dad, um, Lord never put him anywhere but Bible. He graduated from Bible school. And there's a lesson that he learned that local churches need people that are laborers in the, the Word of God and will witness. And that's what Kelly is. Kelly's a witness. And it's dripped on now. His, his son came through, went to Bible school, and now his son's on the field. It's just... Um, part of the ministry of his dad, if you will. The Hines family, same thing. Uh, Chuck, you know Brother Hines down in Florida had the church, his dad? He passed away. Um, Brother Jason was my karate teacher. The unfortunate thing, he taught a lot. I didn't pick up much. So, um, The missionaries to the Philippines, Lauren... Lorna, Chris, Chuck, we don't support them, do we? Missionaries to the Philippines, Bob and Lord, Lord, Lorna, Chris. Uh, they're just sending us a letter. Okay. And Pete Dickens, his family in England. Oh, he looks like Santa Claus, if y'all want to see him. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm not going to take a lot of time with this. I, I, I asked you to please take a few moments of your time and uh, these people decided to write us letters and let us know how the things are going and that your money's being spent to propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's a, a very important thing to, for us to see that uh, they're keeping up with them. And now they're on the field, and you can't be on the field, but you can be on the field, and that's how you're on the field. Everything they do through your financial support of them, you become a part of that. And so there'll be people come up to you and maybe, now there's no little kids in heaven. You understand that? Uh, it, would be, it would be wrong. Suppose grandma dies at 85. Let me help you out here. And your child, God help it, would die at 10. Do you think that child want to be 10 for eternity and she'd be 85 for eternity? I don't think so. So the Lord has got plenty of wisdom in that. So anyway. Go to the book of James, if you would, please. Book of James. <clears throat> I tried to give you some things the other day uh, on that, 
and uh, the introduction of it. Once again, please pray for my throat. It's trying to go out now. Um, <clears throat> um, what you're going to learn about the book of James is this, that it's not James, and I'll show you, and I don't think I did the other day in the living, the, the living Bible. What does it mean? All other Bibles are dead Bibles? Why would you call it the living Bible? Unless you would think everything else is dead. James, when you get in here, you're going to find out that James, there's more than one James. There's James, the Lord's brother. James, the Lord's cousin. There's James, Zebedee. Okay. And you'll find out something by James Zebedee. Now, how you learn something from a Bible book is like anything you learn. It's like Jim and I were taught, and I brought it up last week, who, what, when, where, what, how. Who are you? What is your needs? What can I do to help you? When are you going to do this? That's in a time span. Okay, so we're in a time span here. And the first part that you read, look at verse 1 of chapter 1 of the book of James. The first thing you're going to see real quick here, and I'm going to challenge it. I have this little thing called, I don't like calling it the parallel Bible because it has like one, two, three, four different versions, okay, of the Bible. Well, actually, more than that, um, no, four. The only one that is right is the King James, okay? Now, when you start to get in this, read what it says in verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to who? Okay, now we sort of touched on this the other day. I gave you some background on the Bible and James and so forth, but what you want to understand is when you write a letter, if I'm writing Brother Klotz, uh, dear Brother Chuck, right? That's how I would say it. I'm talking, but there's more than one Chuck in this world, right? I'm writing a letter, dear Brother Chuck. <laughs> I'm writing this letter to Brother Chuck. There's only one Brother Chuck that I know of. So I'm writing it to him, and when I write it to him, uh, we understand it's Chuck Klotz that I'm talking to. I, I know other Chucks, but the one I deal with when it comes to church matters is Chuck Klotz, right? So I write, Dear Brother Chuck Klotz, boom, and then I address the issue that I'm talking about. Who am I writing to? Amen? I'm writing to Brother Klotz, Chuck Klotz, right? Well, who is James writing to? Of who? Oh, so you mean he's not writing to the spiritual Israel? Spiritual saved people? Well, the content of the book you'll not find, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. The content of the book will tell you, number one, who wrote it, when he wrote it, and what he's talking about. Who, what, when, where, right? Where was he? What is he saying? Well, the content of the book is going to show you something. What's it going to show you? It's going to show you that the content of the book is not late acts. It's all early acts. Say, so why would that be? Because it will divulge the writer of the book, not James the Lord's brother, but there's another James in there. Go to Acts chapter 12, and I think we did this the other day, but I want to make sure that I cover the ground. Um, sometimes I have a tendency to to uh, go back too many times, but I, I don't want to miss anything, if you will. So just bear with me a little bit. Go to Acts, what did I say, 12? All right, Acts chapter 12, look at uh, verse 2. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword, who because he was... He saw it pleased the Jews. He proceeded further to take Peter and so forth. Now, there's a footnote or a note, if you will, in Acts, uh, Acts chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. The epistle of James was written before this took place since the James had his head cut off in verse 2, right? 
James addressed his epistle to the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, so we're addressing this book. This book is addressed to, or this James is writing to, who? Who's writing? James, right? Who's he writing to? I think sometimes we have a tendency not to want to say anything because we're thinking, well, you know, I don't want to make a mistake. You can't make a mistake on this. If I write, Dear Andy Glista, it's pretty obvious I'm writing to Andy Glista, right? So when he's writing here, you have a little bit of a problem. The content of the book will determine or tell you who he's talking to. Do me a favor. Anybody here find anything by the grace of God in James? Say, what's the problem? The problem is here in Acts chapter 12, the guy named James Zebedee had his head cut off in verse 2, right? His head's gone. He, he can't talk anymore. He can't say anything. He can't do anything. James Zebedee was killed. So when you read the book, Everything you're going to find in there is going to be early acts. That will tell you who the writer was and the content of what he's writing. Well, you, well go to chapter 2 of the book of James. Chapter 2. I think it's 2.24. I'm, I don't like working with my memory anymore. But anyway, uh, let's see if we can come up with it. Chuck, you got the thing there? I'm sorry. 224? Right. 220, okay. Um, pick it up in verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith? You can say you have faith, right? And have not works, can faith save him? Yes. But not according to James. Why? because he's a Jew, and it's early Acts. <laughs> and he didn't have, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We're created unto good works, if you want to continue in Ephesians chapter 2, that God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Walk in what? The good works. Just because you're saved by grace doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing something for God. But you're not saved by what you do. You're saved by what he did. Amen? All right. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute and daily food, and one of them so and so forth and so on. Um, let me pick it up, 220. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is what? Now, you have faith, but your faith, and works will not save you. For it's for by grace are you saved through what? Faith. Not here. You won't find it here. You say, well, what's the big deal about it? The big deal about it, when you look at the book of James in the Living Bible, here's your big deal. Verse 1, James, the servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and... <laughs> The King James says, James, the servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve scribes scattered abroad. Greetings, right? Not here in the Living Bible. There's a little parenthesis under the Living Bible, and it says the Jewish Christians scattered everywhere. He wasn't writing the Jewish Christians, was he? Do you see the word Christian in there anyway? He was writing to the twelve tribes scattered abroad. That's your living Bible. That's what you say, what is the purpose of all this? Well, you're going to find out the purpose. Every time they try to change something or put a footnote in there, I'd like to take my foot and put it in their note, but every time they do such a thing, they do it with a purpose. Now, James is telling you that it's your works. Well, in Acts chapter 12 and verse 2, uh, you find out that James Zebedee, the writer of this book that I believe wrote this book, the writer of this book didn't know anything about the grace of God. Didn't, why? 
because he's all early Acts. His head was taken off in Acts 12 and verse 2. And it's pretty hard to talk when your head's here and your body's here. You understand I'm making fun of it, but it's ridiculous. And so what you'll find in all the new Bibles, why do they do it? So we ask the question, why? What are they doing? What purpose is it? What are they trying to prove? Well, there's a little thing called the perpetual virginity of Mary. Okay? Now, you say, well, what does that have to do with the book of James? It has a lot to do with it because there's more than one James. There's James Zebedee. There's James, the Lord's brother. And it's trying to disprove the fact that Mary had other children. And if you can prove that Mary had other children, then guess what it would take away? The perpetual virginity of Mary, that she was perfect in any way. Uh, I'm going to have to scratch my brain a minute. Is it Acts 2, Acts 2 where they met up in the upper room, Chuck? Is that Acts 2, Acts 4? I'm stuck in there somewhere. Mary's attendance was there, and all the disciples, remember Jesus going to the cross, and all the disciples ran and he got in the upper room for fear. Amen? That's what Christians do. I'm not slamming on Christians. Uh, I, if I was there, I'd probably be the first one in the upper room, okay? Um, but the disciples, guess who was up there with them? Mary. And they try to make Mary more than what Mary was, more than the position. Everybody is a vessel. If you come to Jesus Christ, you're God's vessel, and you're to use that vessel to glorify God. Mary was a chosen vessel to bring in our Savior. Amen? Okay. But what they're trying to say is, the reason they're trying to deter around, the reason they're trying to move away from this is very easy. They, they pre pre preached the perpetual virginity of Mary, then she couldn't have other children, could she? Mary did have other children. And look at Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. I want to do it in Doc's Bible because there's some notes here I want to hopefully try to give you. Matthew, Mark. Mark 6. Um, yep, that's it. I just, I lost my spot there a minute. There we go. I got it underlined. Now pick it up in verse 1. He went from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence that hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of... I thought he didn't have any brothers. I think Mary, thought Mary didn't have any other children. Is your Bible right and we're wrong? or what, What's the score here? What does it say? I'm, I'm really not interested in what they want to try to make you think. It's all, say, what's behind all this nonsense? What causes Gail Ripplinger to write what she writes? What causes Doc to do the things he does and say the things he does? about? Because, brethren, if you're not careful, they're going to take the method of your salvation away. Now, one of the things you're going to find out very quickly is that they're not interested in whether you're saved or not saved. If they were, they would give you the truth. Um, what's that? Colossians, what, 1, 2, um, I'll get there in a minute. 
I, I want to get this thing. I'm losing it right now. Um, One fourteen, is it? Yep, I think so. Colossians 1, verse 14. Now, I want to read it to you in a moment, but I want to read it to you um, from this parallel. Well, the Bible says, In whom we have redemption. Now, listen, please. Through his what? Even the forgiveness of sin, right? Uh, if you read any other Bible, it says, in whom we have redemption, even the forgiveness of sin. Why would you take the blood of Jesus Christ out of there? Because then it makes the Catholic Church of none effect. In whom we have redemption, okay? Through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Why would they take, in whom we have redemption, even the forgiveness of sin? What did they leave out? If you take the blood of Jesus Christ out, then you're taking the method that he uses. Amen? Think about it a moment. What's their purpose? What's the purpose of trying to take James? Like Jim gave me the thing over in, in, in uh, Mark, uh, James chapter 2. The deal of it is they're trying to make you think that you have to do something to prove that you're saved. Now, you should, you should. You don't do something to prove you're saved. You do something because you are saved. Right? I go to church. I come to church because I want to hear about him. I'm tired of ABC, NBC, UBC, anybody C. I'm tired of hearing all that other nonsense. Well, do you know what Biden did? And what? I'm not interested in what he did or didn't do. What I'm interested in, is he coming? Please hurry up. I need to get out of here. Amen? And what am I doing while I'm waiting on this coming? Should we not be laboring for the Lord? Should we not be witnesses for the Lord? Should we not enjoy God? Do you know if you step in out of here and you leave the world out there, I'm going to tell you what a blessing it'll be. You will enjoy services. Amen. You don't come in here with your mind fixated on, well, you know, who's getting back in. All I care about is who's getting in at the end of Revelation. Buddy, we're going to, Revelation, we get out of here, and then when you deal with Revelation later, you see how we get out of here, and boy, what a blessing it is. But James was not written by the Lord's brother because later on you find out the Lord's brother uh, <clears throat> that Mary had other children, and James, uh, the brother of Jesus, uh, you find in uh, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 15 through 7, the son of James, so forth and so on. So what we're trying to ex explain to you this morning is, listen, when you get in here, look at the content of what's being said and apply to it if it's what the Lord's talking about and salvation through faith, or it's by works. As Jim pointed out in chapter 2, he's saying, you see my works? It shows me I'm saved. Well, what did God tell Noah to do? Why did he tell him to build it? How, what was the time that he's telling you to build it? I understand the ark, and if Moses hadn't have done it, he would have been in serious trouble, correct? Noah, Noah built the ark, excuse me. If Noah hadn't done it, he would have been in serious trouble. Why? Because we're dealing with works. See, by my works? So James is sitting in the back in the Old Testament. He's still under works. He still is not convinced that the Lord's come. Talk to the majority of Jews today. I met one so far in my life that was saved. He went to Olive Baptist Church in Pensacola, Florida. He's my superintendent of the job. And that man, when he didn't need to keep me on the job, my, what I did for him was place all the steel for him and the, and the slabs of the building and the columns and Andy, the beams, I did all those for him. And the walls, I did all that for him. And when my job was done, I couldn't figure out why he didn't lay me off. 
a saved Jew ended up writing me a note at the end. Bob, I could have laid you off many a times, but I invested in the work that God has given you to do, and I wanted to keep you close to school so you could continue and finish. Les Coppinger, a Jew. God can still use anybody. But what this book, you have to, if you cannot get who he's writing to down, then it'll confuse the life out of you. Okay? That's all you really need to know. The purpose of what they're trying to do and why they're trying to do it is they're trying to prove a Catholic deal about the perpetual virginity. I heard nothing about it all through my uh, grade school years, all the time. That's all I ever heard of. You know, Mary, this, Mary was a vessel chosen by God to be used to bring in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. You don't patronize and bow down to a statue. When I was in parochial school, up until went to St. Francis Xavier over in Anacostia. And my mom and dad wouldn't let me go to public school. They had me bus for one year. Thank God they got me out of there. But I went over there, and, and one time they had the bone. They said it was a bone of one of the martyrs. And it was in a glass case, and they brought and they flipped that thing up, and they had every one of the kids kiss that, that plastic little thing all the way around. Say, so what was that? Deifying. Deifying somebody. Why didn't they bring the bones of Paul out? What is, you see what I'm, it's crazy. It's ridiculous. And all this is, do one thing, is to prove one thought that you're still under works. So you know what? When you get into it, uh, I, I'm not trying to kick at anybody. I'm just giving you Bible. If you don't like the Bible, then don't get after me. Talk to God about it. But you get people out there today says, well, you know, if you don't do this, if you don't speak in tongues, you're really not saved. I had a lady tell me that one time. I said, I'm not. She said, yeah, you have to speak in tongues in order to be saved. Well, the Bible says tongues are for a sign. Not to them believe, to them believe not, right? Where there's tongues, they show what? Why should they cease? Why would God say tongues are there? Why would God say tongues shall cease? Why would they cease? I'll tell you why. Remember back, Stephen, in Acts chapter 8, Jim, 7, Chuck, 8, 7, somewhere in there. Remember Stephen back then? He stands up and he gives this whole history of the nation of Israel. Remember all the patriarchs he's talking about? He gives this great, and he's up there, and he's up there in, a bunch of, in front of a bunch of Jews, which is not a good thing. You know what? Yeah, maybe the best thing is you know a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of uh, wisdom, if you will. Don't get up there in front of a bunch of people and like five hundred people standing there, and you're going to chawn down on their ancestry. You're going to chawn down on their faith. And you're going to and think you're going to come out of there unscarred. You know what happened to Stephen Joseph? He got stoned. That's back in the day when stone really meant stoned. Amen? He got stoned. Some of y'all are smiling. That's not the more stone I knew about. Why did Stephen get stoned? He told the truth. Paul says, Am I therefore to become your enemy that, that you should believe a lie? That I tell you the truth? People look at you. You stand on the corners and you tell these guys go out on, on the street and they'll start back up probably in the spring but they go out on the street and they go out there with a thought in mind, a purpose in mind. They go out there and they try to bring the gospel. People say, well, why don't you leave it in the church? Because you won't come to church to get it. So therefore, we'll bring it out to you. Well, what are you giving me this piece of paper? Well, the Bible says, seek ye out the word of the Lord and read, but you won't read the Bible, so we're going to give you what the Bible says 
to tell you something. Why? Because we stand for something. That book charges us to do certain things, whereas when you start to melt down the Word of God, it doesn't do that. So when you get in here, I, you have to have a foundation. What is he saying, and who in the heck is he talking to? Because, brethren, other than spiritualizing, very few book, uh, verses in the book of James, you're going to have a problem. You won't be able to show some things. So I gave you the background on James, and I did it last week, but I want to make sure that <clears throat> you got it again this week uh, to make sure I covered all the bases of it. So let's get into James. James chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh, if you want the basics on James, it's got five chapters, 108 verses, 2,409 words. Say, so what's the purpose of that? Every word of God is pure. Okay? Uh, you need to understand that. That God gave you a Bible and he gave it to you for a reason. And uh, James, a servant of God, what he is, what you are, are you saved this morning? Every one of you are servant of God. You know what a servant does? Oh, interesting, isn't it? That's, that's deep in the Greek. Amen. A servant serves. Not every servant serves the same thing. You ever watch these people have these big on to do's and all this nonsense? Uh, every once in a while, Jim and I go somewhere and we we'll slide off in Old Town Fredericksburg, and you'll have one person bring you water. Remember that? Another person brings you a menu. The, the, the guy that brings the check's probably the most important guy in the place. But the other one will bring you this and that. A servant, we all have different areas which God wants us to serve, but we only have one Savior to whom we are to serve. All these people come to our table and they come with different things, but they all have one important role to serve and you walk out if you serve right guess what they get blessed if you serve wrong I'm not going to think much of you well look Paul was a uh, James was a servant of God now who who is he talking to a Lord Jesus Christ to the tw now we've established this the 12 tribes of which are scattered abroad, greetings. So James says what he says, um, and as I said, showing you in this little Rick and my roll over here, James, a servant of God. A, a, well, he, the, the modern language calls him a slave. James, this is a living Bible, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Jewish Christians is who he's talking to. Well, Jews are under the law, right? What is a Christian under? For by grace, right? Um, there's so many things running through my head right now, but probably none of them are going to stop. But the, the deal is servant of God, of the uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. So James, we've established who he's writing to, right? And we're going to see what he's going to say. Now, if these are spiritual Christian under the blood of Jesus Christ, you're going to find it in here and you're not going to. I'm going to already throw the stump in front of you. You're not going to. You're not going to find the blood. You're going to find a mixture of works in here. And once again, according to Ephesians, Paul's writing now to a church the Ephes at Ephesus, and he's telling them, for by grace are you saved through faith. And so you need to understand that. So James, a servant of God, and our Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. So there's your greeting. Now, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations. Uh, brother is used like you would use it in 519. Um, 
Let's go to 519 and see what he's saying. 5, chapter 5, and verse, well, I'll get through all these leaf pages here. Verse 19. Brethren, if, if any of you err from the truth, and one convert him, uh, let him know that that which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall be saved, a soul from the death, from death, and shall hide in a multitude of sins. So that's what he's talking to. Brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. So when you look at this thing, you look at it, somebody in Christ who could be referring to anyone uh, in the 12 tribes. He could be talking to anybody. It doesn't matter. Um, joy. What is joy? To fall is not the same as being led in the line of duty or accidentally as an act of testing him. Um, it says, count it all joy. Why? Because there's a purpose behind what's going on. Look at verse 3, please. Verse 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your what? Worketh what? Uh, but let verse 4, patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect, entire, warning, nothing. So count it all joy. When Why? When you fall into it. A Christian will be tested and tried all different ways and all different times. Uh, you're going to be tried to the limit. Uh, you're going to be tried by your family. You understand that? Well, what do you mean? that I, I've went through this for years. Um, I have a sister, one sister left, and myself out of 10. And my sister does not know Jesus Christ. The unfortunate part of it is if she didn't get saved prior, I think she has, um, yeah, oh, dementia, thank you. I was going to say Alzheimer's, but it's dementia that she has. And she doesn't know where she is or who she is or what's going on. Now, if it was a baby like my grandson uh, who doesn't really know too much about right and wrong, uh, he's protected until he has that mind that we can get the knowledge that he needs to be saved or lost, of what Jesus Christ did. But I have an unfortunate sister, but she has a son. She has grandchildren that I'm in contact with. And please pray for me. I'm trying to put something together that I can talk to Donald. And maybe he can, if he can penetrate his mom's head, maybe she still has the faculties enough to do that. But... Um, we all ought to be testim have testimonies, but we're all going to be under test. Some of you are under more. Sometimes you're, and you guys like Chuck and Andy and some others that work on construction, you know how that goes, man. I mean, them dudes, they're relentless. And it's not all men. In this day and age, there's a lot of women on the job too. But, you know, the deal of it is that you're going to be tested. Count it joy. Count it. That's what he's telling you. To count it, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work, it's got work in it. What does it do? Uh, these are to try you, your faith, to put you to the test and to give you patience. Um, look at Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, and I'm running out of time already. I'm going to mark this so we don't go through this again. Um, Romans, what did I say, Romans 5? I'm sorry. Romans, oh man. All right, Romans chapter 5. Um, look at verse 3. Romans chapter 5 and verse 3. Then not only so, but we glory in our tribulations, also knowing that tribulation, what does it do? So tribulation has a purpose and a point in it. It works something in you. Uh, patience, experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. 
for scarcely will a righteous man will he die, one die, yet preadventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us. Patience is one of the things that every Christian, every person, everybody needs. When you go through some things that you go through, sometimes it's to teach you some things that you can't rush God. Do you understand? We know that all things work together for good to them that to them are called, called according to his purpose. So God has a purpose in troubles and trials and tribulations that you go through. What? Teach you patience. Teach you to wait on God. I'm sure there are things in your life and my life that we've all looked at at one time or another and said, wow, we need to learn some things in here but we just don't have patience to wait on to learn it. Do you understand? It's, Lord, uh, could you answer this prayer? And would you hurry up, please? I don't have time to wait around. That's how we are. I mean, it's just Christians. I'm the same way. I'm not looking down my nose at you. Brother, I got the same problem. When I have a dilemma and I'm going through something, it's like, hey, God, I'm, 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 would you get your short order cook thing going on here? I need to get this taken care of really pretty quick. I don't have any patience. The Lord says, dummy, I'm trying to teach you some. And I go, Lord, you called me a dummy. So, well, you are. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, man, I'm going to get in trouble. Anyway, we'll pick it up next week. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for those that have attended. Pray your blessing to preach in our in Jesus' name. Amen.